all the highlights for me is the Raptors have great needs in terms of center production, which won't come anytime soon this season, unless they're in on Andre Drummond, which I'll get to later. And uh, the other thing is they, they really are super shallow at wing. And a lot of people talk about how Toronto is great at finding these long guys who can play defense and, and shoot effectively enough to stay out on the court. But in reality, besides Siakam and OG, they really haven't had much at the wing position for a while now. And you can argue that Stanley Johnson has given them great energy, but Stanley Johnson is not like you need one more dependable guy. It's kind of the situation Boston's in right now. Everyone was so excited for them to have this incredible all-star duo in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown especially has taken an incredible leap this season. He's up from 20 points per game to 27 points per game this season, which is incredible. Uh, but behind those two, they really don't have much. It's very similar to the Raptors. In, like They've got Semi Ojale, Grant Williams, guys that – they just aren't as dependable as those two top guys and the Raptors are in that same situation. So that's something that needs to be addressed moving forward because one of these guys is always on the floor at, at, at a time, but they're also usually taking the most difficult defensive matchup while also being relied upon to provide some offense. And so I think you need one more really dependable, either defensive guy, or if you get lucky enough and fall high enough in the draft where you can get a, an elite scorer, uh, one of those top 10 guys, then that would be ideal. Uh, but I think they just, Stanley Johnson is, has been giving them great minutes so far this season, but I think you need to upgrade that position uh, because especially if one of these guys is out, Siakam and OG, then there's really nothing behind them. I mean, yeah, I, it strikes me that they're in that unhappy middle ground where they're not good enough to place well in the conference, but they're too good to, fall down far enough to get like a excellent draft pick and will probably end up somewhere I mean they do great in the draft even in the early 20s and it's a deep draft class so whatever happens I'm sure we'll be a better team for it but I, I think they'll finish high enough to not get one of those like coveted top 12 picks but probably solid chance they have a tough playoff matchup in the first round and we'll talk about this more as we get close to the trade deadline the the onus then becomes on uh Masai to truly say do I want this team to make a playoff run because there's no gate revenue this year for playoff games or anything like that so there's no real incentive to make the playoffs besides obviously wanting to win and compete every night so it can be on a Masai to say hey let's make the most out of this season from a long-term view from a management perspective and maybe you ask about moving a couple of these guys. I, I honestly, at this point, there is no single Raptor. I maybe Fred Van Vliet. That's, that's the only one that I wouldn't move. I think all of these guys for the right price are available. Like Siakam, OG, any, any players are available for the right price. Obviously we probably value these guys higher than the rest of the league does. So they won't get traded, but uh, yeah, the, it, why not move some of these guys for some assets that you can turn into great prospects in the future because the Raptors have a great development team and you're most likely not going to move all of your kind of top four guys. So you'll still have some winning culture left after moves are made. But I think it's on Masai and management to say if this team, if we don't have goals for the playoffs, then we got to work to make this roster a little bit worse so that we fall down the standings and make our way to awards better odds for a top pick i mean yeah it, it would make more sense to me to move lowry than to move siakam or og because like you well i can see see siakam doing very very well in a, on a team where he is the number two offensive option and he's not gonna get as many doubles and he's not gonna quite have the same pressure i can see og excelling anywhere just I think what he brings defensively is so important as you highlighted in this loss and I mean he hasn't figured out how to generate his own offense but sitting at the open three dangerous he, he's good for a couple rushes to the paint so I can see a winning team placing value on him but I I don't uh 
I can't, I don't see the point in moving backwards with those two because it would kind of signify a ready to give up and like we've seen their ceiling and we want more, which I don't think we're at that point yet. If you're moving one of those guys, like I heard it mentioned briefly on a podcast and it's kind of tickled the back of my mind. It was just trading one of those guys for like a Michael Porter Jr. And while I wouldn't do that trade because I worry about uh, Porter's healthiness and his durability, uh, it would definitely be something interesting where you could possibly get a guy with similar long-term upside uh, who's a little bit more affordable and just provides you something different. Like the one thing you'll say is Siakam will never get to Porter's level in terms of natural ability to create a bucket because Siakam is, has improved his shot immensely, but Porter is just built for scoring. He can make a shot over anyone and create his own shot. And he's going to be spectacular at that as long as he stays healthy. And maybe that's something the Raptors would want over a guy who plays a little bit more defense, but is a little bit more robotic in terms of uh, offense creation. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> chills imagining uh, what Siakam does with Jokic's playmaking, but... Yeah, oh, that would be unbelievable. It, it would be, yeah, it would be a great trade for the Nuggets. Uh, I didn't have them on my list of storylines, but that is the position of value that they need the most is they need a wing to stop a LeBron, a Kawhi, Paul George, um, even a guy who's quick enough to defend someone like Donovan Mitchell, uh, even a guy who's quick enough to stop someone like Devin Booker, right? You need a, a wing to stop some of these top teams in the West. And, and Denver doesn't really have that. And Michael Porter Jr. doesn't play the kind of defense that they need. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I still, I feel like those two still have enough upside where you don't fully know the value of what they're going to be at. And unless you have like some sort of guarantee of at least as much value as you can hope for them, I don't see that trade as worthwhile. And I can't imagine any team being ready to offer that up so unless like golden state wanted to give up wiseman or something but well and that is again i don't have golden state here but i think they're definitely if you think about it are steph and clay and draymond willing to wait five years when wiseman finally turns into the player that they need him to be because I think he's on a pretty long development curve as oh, it looks yeah. right now. Okay. So, so, like, I think Wiseman's available. If they can get a guy, uh, I think Bradley Beal is probably the number one name out there in trade markets because he's 27. He's just reaching the beginning of his prime years. He's leading the league in scoring. Uh, so Wiseman for Beal or some sort of package like that would be really interesting from the Warriors' perspective because um, – they have centers who know their system and fit in well, even if Kevon Looney's not a household name, he's really solid for them. And that's all they really need. And if you add Bradley Beal to Steph and Dre, whew, that would be so much fun to watch. And Beal wants out. That, yeah. And everyone's talking about that right now, where should Beal go? But I don't want to dive into that because it's going to get over, uh, overly discussed. But just, I think Wiseman's on the table for a top asset and Wiseman for a Siakam OG would be a really interesting trade. I think Golden State doesn't do that. They don't value those guys highly enough, but it would be interesting. I actually do think they'd fit fairly well into the system, like both having solid three-point shots, solid enough playmaking ability, and maybe uh, Steve Kerr could do something about Siakam's roboticness, but it would, it would most likely be OG just because I don't know if they could fit salaries to get Siakam because then they'd have yeah. like four really highly paid guys on their roster. It'd have to be OG for like Kelly Oubre and Wiseman. That would be, yeah. And we okay. might send more value back on our side. All right. 